Well, hey everyone, hello. It is so good to see you today. Um, I see we've got a bunch of people jumping on and um, yeah. So it's awesome. And we actually have, I can see the microphone. See, this is why Jacqueline needs to be here to be our tech person. She's going to get a kick out of that, but that's okay. So I've got Amy joining me today. So Amy Woody, and you can drop in the comments if you know Amy in person, but Amy actually works in our missions office. Mm -hmm. And best part is, is we're really good friends too. So um, we were just having, so if we look like we were crying um, a second ago, we were cry laughing about just some <laughs> silliness. So <laughs> we were just having a good laugh right before we got started. So um, I see Emily and Louise. Lisa, Nora, and Sonia, thank you so much for dropping in on the comments um, and just saying hi, yeah. and we're going to get started with this. And um, hopefully all of you have been enjoying this study. Um, one of the big benefits that we have for Amy, which I mentioned last week, is that Amy, you actually struggle with anxiety. And so um, for Jacqueline and I, yes, we can teach and talk about some of these things, but I mean, we everyone gets anxious, but you actually yes. have anxiety. And so mm -hmm. to have somebody with experience in this and to offer a helping hand, yeah, you know, in the I'll same way of God's word. And so something that is exciting, I know right now we've got about six, seven ladies on, but um, we had a hundred ladies watch the first one. So I think that that's really awesome. That is awesome. Um, so even though um, <clears throat> not everyone is able to join at noon, um, this is a resource that is being used all throughout the week. And so um, so if you're joining us late and you're recording live, hello to you as well. So that is really great. Um, so kind of Amy and I were talking beforehand and we both kind of um, sort of landed on a theme for all five of the days. And we'll eventually get to that, get to that theme. But what I would like you to do is to go ahead and write in the comments what day was your favorite. Because, um, again, we have that little bit of a delay for us here who are live. And so, oh, hey, Levy, you're finally joining us from California. I know she was a little bit behind last week, but so it's good to see you on here. Um, but which day was your favorite? Because I, I had a hard time picking just one. We had a few that were really my favorite. But um, and it's kind of maybe it was your favorite because it spoke to you the most. Um, and so. And then we'll kind of talk about that. But which day was your was kind of the favorite that you had? So I had two that I really enjoyed, but day two and day four just really, really spoke, spoke to, to my you. heart. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Let's see. Nora said, my favorite was day one because God hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love and sound mind. Yes. Yeah. I thought that that one was really, really good. Um, I think day four and day five were my favorite. But I also like day two, but I yeah. think day four and day five, I really loved um, the invitation, you know, come to me all who are weary. I loved that. But day four, I feel like, and we'll get to that, why Amy and I both love that one so much. We were just discussing that. Um, so if you guys want to go ahead and sort of, we'll just sort of um, kind of unpack each one of the lessons. Emily said day three. Oh, that's great. Um We'll kind of unpack each one of the lessons. And so what I kind of kind of will pray, actually, before we get before we get going, you were just about to remind me of that, weren't you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but just kind of how each of these sort of, hey, Jamie, thanks for joining. Um, there was sort of a reminder in anxiety, I felt like in lesson one, summing up that there's a battle and it can be won. And then lesson two is in a sense a prescription of how to fight with Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. And I felt as though lessons three and four kind of went together with the, re the reminder, like the reliance on God and that we are heard by him and that his spirit helps us. And then the final one was just this invitation for God to be with us or for us to be with God in the battle and that Jesus is with us and fights alongside us. But before we get into kind of the theme, because I believe that all of those can be summed up in the one word. It was actually Amy who came up with the word um, that we're kind of focusing on. Um, would you Would you pray for us? Yes. Just yes. as we get going. All right, let's pray. <clears throat> Father, just thank you for this opportunity um, to study your word together with other ladies, Lord. Um, Father, I just thank you um, for your love letter to us that talks about anxiety, Lord. Mm -hmm. um, it, it leads us um, in when we're fearful and when we are, when we are blue and down Lord. And so father, we just ask that you just continually um, draw ourselves to you and to always look to you in those moments. And, and Lord, if there are women here 
or women that watch, Lord, that are anxious, Lord, I just ask for your um, spirit to comfort them, guide them, and let them know that they are not alone, Lord. So again, just thank you for this time and your will be done. And in mm -hmm. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. So as Amy and I were kind of, oh, there's Jacqueline. Hi from Jamaica. She probably didn't see the beginning where I had the microphone messed up and you could see it in the screen. So that's funny. You, you, you still can see it. But that's oh, okay. can you? Oh, it's okay. It's all right. So we're good. <laughs> this is not, this is a low budget film, guys. It's all good. Right. So, all right. So um, something that Amy and I landed on, well, actually I landed on the word trustworthy for the week. I just kept thinking, you know, all of this, all these scriptures, all of it comes back to the fact that God is trustworthy. So therefore I can trust in him and my um, anxiousness does not have to be um, so maybe dominant or yeah. so, you know, so overwhelming. Yeah. Um, but then Amy had a word and what was your word? It was so good. <laughs> my word, um, the theme and the word that I found to be true was ever present, that the Lord is ever present with us, walking with us, guiding yes. us in those moments when we, we don't have words. So, yes. Yeah. yeah. And I just thought that was so good. She was just saying that when she was writing about kind of the theme that she saw of the Lord in this and that he's just, he's so ever present and so intentional and so kind, so sweet to us that he is present when we are at our most anxious. Cause I believe when we're at our most anxious, we think that we're completely alone or that we're scattered. And we'll talk about that yeah. a little bit more, but he is present whenever we feel scattered. He is present whenever it feels like hope is lost, you know, all of those kinds of things. So, all right, well, let's go ahead and we'll turn to um, lesson one, which is found on page five. And now Jacqueline and I kind of touched on this a little bit last week. Um, and so we were just talking about making sure that you look at the context of all of these scriptures. Um, and so, and so I'm just curious, did anybody find that really just, looking at these verses, because you maybe heard them before, was digging into the context. Did it kind of change your um, perception a little bit of, um, of the verse? I was just curious on any of that. And so um, I think one of the things that I brought, brought up about this, okay, Nora said yes, well, good, um, was that sound judgment. And I think I touched on that last week. I can't remember if I did or not, but how anxiety can make you feel crazy yeah. and that God does not actually give us a spirit of fear or of craziness, you know, sound. but that his is of a sound judgment. And so um, that is something, but we were going to talk about on page seven. So what, what we'll probably do is we're going to look at one question from each of the days from each one of the lessons. Um, but if there is an answer or something to one of these other questions, please feel free to go ahead, type it in the comments. Um, and so what we'll do is we're going to talk about question one. And I feel like, and Amy had a really good answer for this. Um, so question one on page seven was how can you discern whether or not something is from God? And so Amy had been talking a little bit about that. And I just felt like you had a really yeah. good answer yeah. for it. <laughs> so of, of course, like for me, some of the, the things that I do um, to discern whether or not something is from God. Well, of course, I mean, I, I do pray about it. I ask for confirmation but what I do is weigh two, two different sides, uh, right. just like in the word, um, the, you know, the, the people would separate the wheat from the chafe. Yeah. So, you know, it'd be this constant circle circle made on the threshing floor and they would kind of grind the wheat and then they would take their shovel, if you will, and throw it up in the air and the chafe would blow. So if something's not of God, like, it, it will be removed. Yeah. And, and you can discern the, the wheat, if you will. Yes. And so sometimes that causes us to have to wait and we don't like that. I hate waiting. I hate waiting. It's the worst. But that's another way is to, <laughs> yeah. to know that it's something's from God. And yeah. It's just, just waiting. And I like that, that cause, cause it makes me think then of like the house built on a rock rather mm -hmm. than sand because, you know, it's steadfast. It's true. Yep. It's, um, you know, it's solid. And so, um, Something I had said to answer to this. Now, if you have an answer to this question, one that you would like to share, go ahead and type it on in. Um, but I was saying kind of through the power of the spirit and through prayer, somebody, you know, and I'm sure it's this common phrase, but, you know, if it doesn't uh, sound like the Lord, if it doesn't, you know, if you're familiar with his word, and it doesn't sound like him. Yeah. Then therefore 
it can't be from God, you know, if it doesn't. Um, and so exactly, does it line up with scripture? If so, it's from God. <laughs> so it's exactly what Jacqueline was saying. So exactly like that. Um, so if it doesn't look and sound like the Lord, you know, it's not, it's not of him. And so, and that comes with a relationship with God. The more that you get to know him, the more familiar you are with his voice. Um, maybe you guys have met those people that they're always the people that I want to strive to be more like that just scripture kind of falls from their mouth because they spend so much time in it. You can tell that their mind is constantly renewed, that scripture just pours out of their mouth. And so I take, I'm not pride, pride is the wrong thing, but I'm like, oh, I, when I recognize that it is scripture, I'm like, okay, I'm spending more time with the Lord than I realize, you know, those kinds of things. Um, so that is really great. All right. Well, let's go ahead. Does anyone else, if you have any more thoughts on lesson one, please feel free to drop that into the comments, but we're going to move on to one of Amy's favorites. Um, which is day two. And I know Jacqueline read this scripture just because it's so good. And you have probably um, read this scripture before as well. Um, and Philippians 4, 6 June says, don't worry about anything, but in everything through prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And um, I actually used to have a ring that I wore on, wore on one of them, like I wore it every day and I would like twist it around my finger oh, yeah. and it was like a twisted ring and it had that entire scripture um all the way around it um and so what i love about this scripture is that it kind of provides a way of um sort of a tool of how to kind of step back from worry to step back a bit from the anxiousness and I love that it's through prayer. So you're in communion with God, but then also a petition. So, you know, mm -hmm. you're in need of something, but you're doing that with Thanksgiving. And I was talking with um, Amy about how Thanksgiving tends to help you take a step back from your situation. What I always like to kind of say is, rather than looking horizontal on the playing field, it makes you look vertical because it reminds you that, yes, this is my situation right now, but through looking vertical, I can remember the big God or something like that. That's the way that I get it around my mind is that through Thanksgiving, I can then look upward. Um, but yeah, I know that Philippians four is one of your absolute favorites. Yeah. yeah. So. so I focus on Philippian four. Philippians four, sometimes in my most anxious times like when words won't come out I just mm -hmm. know I can turn to Philippians 4 and kind of what I do mentally and sometimes I write it down and it helps me organize my thoughts is Philippians 4 8 mm -hmm. talks about finally brothers whatever is true whatever is honorable whatever is just whatever is pure lovely whatever is commendable if there is anything excellent so what I do is I kind of write it out and I list the things it's true, honorable, pure, lovely, commendable, excellent, worthy of praise. And so that takes my mind mm -hmm. and it kind of starts to organize what are things that are making me anxious yeah. and replace them and replace them. Kind of how Jacqueline was saying that, you know, breathe in Jesus, breathe out this, breathe in Jesus and breathe out that. Yeah. You can be breathe in whatever is good yeah, and remove whatever is not good. Yes. Breathe in whatever is lovely, remove whatever is not lovely. And I loved, I loved that because we, we had kind of talked a little bit, maybe you're familiar with it, the method, it's called the five, four, three, two, one method. And it's kind of like a quick way of like in a, in a moment of almost basically panic attack, yeah. anxiety of list five things you see, list four things. I can't remember the whole yeah, order yeah. of it, but I loved that Amy took that and she's actually got that more scripture based and it's list things that are lovely. She even said something as simple as like holding a baby, yeah. like, the like that smell, thought, the, the smell, smell of, of a baby, baby, you know, like yeah. those things, Um, you know, for me, like, you know, a dog wagging its tail, you know, like those things too. Yeah. I mean, just the simple little things, um, laughing until we're crying, yes, which we just I did just a minute ago, <laughs> you know, like remember those yeah. things that are so good. Um, and so I loved that, that you took that very idea of the five, like basically the five, four, three, two, one, and we apply it scripturally. And so, hey, Catherine, I see you joined on. And thank you, Nora. Yeah, we're, we're trying, we're trying. So, <laughs> um, and so I just, I love that. Um, and so we we did talk yesterday about kind of anxiety and I sort of 
basically when we were talking yesterday, I was asking Amy some questions. Um, and so she was kind of explaining anxiety as sort of a fear of what's coming. Yes. In the moment, you know, in the moment. Um, and so I would ask you is, is prayer a way of kind of changing the game plan because you're saying these are all the things I'm anxious and worried about. I'm going to place them at the foot of the cross and just, and it may not take away the situation, yeah. but it invites Christ into the situation. Yeah. And so for me, a lot of times on, if I'm being just completely honest, prayer is not my first um, response when I'm super anxious. Mm -hmm. um, and, it, and it should be, but right. it, it's not. Um, but prayer, when I finally like am so, so overwhelmed and I'm so spiraling and, you know, just out of control, when I do finally come to a place of quieting down, going to the Lord and, and mm -hmm. just, you know, not even having words. Like there's so many yeah. times I, I just can't even speak. You can't even say what it is. Yeah. And, um, it, it's, it's kind of hard to explain, but it's just yeah. sitting in the quiet. taking a breath and thinking, and then I start to kind of settle down. It I mean, my anxiety doesn't disappear, right? but it does kind of just align with the fact that he knows what's going on right. in my, my head and my back heart. To that, like solid foundation yes. of, yeah. Because, yeah. Because unfortunately it's not just in your head, like right. your heart's racing, mm -hmm. your hands are sweating. My heart yeah. hurts. Like I'm, yes. I get like worried because I'm like, yes. am I having a heart attack? Yes. But, like I had a friend who called an ambulance because they thought you were having a heart yep. attack. So, yep. so that's yeah. kind of like uh, my anxiety. And then there's panic attacks. Like yes. those are those are like different. A whole different. Yes, yeah. a whole different thing. But what I do find is going back to Philippians four, and you know I used to get, if I'm again just being transparent, mm -hmm. I used yeah. to get irritated and frustrated with this verse <laughs> because it's like, do not be anxious, do not worry. Well, it's so much easier said than done. Yeah. But what this is really saying is like our prayer or like thereof can help or hinder our triumph and fleeing from the sin and straight to the father's arms. Yeah. It's like he was there. He was tempted with it. He yeah. didn't fall into sin. Yes. But he understands. He understands. He, and I yes. find comfort in knowing yeah. that he understands. Yeah. And I just loved, I loved how they did, um, how, how this study did illustrate this, that the author illustrated how, you know, Jesus himself was tempted by it that yes. he, you know, cause I yeah. guess, I guess that's not one that I always think of mm -hmm. as him having been tempted by. It. And so I love that it brought that. And I think that, I don't know about you guys, but in some ways that changes things a little bit when you know that Christ has was tempted by it and yet defeated it. Yeah. And yet his spirit is with us. So therefore mm -hmm. it can be defeated, but there's also that, cause she and I were talking about how there is with anxiety, a spiritual side, but mm -hmm. there's also a physical side yep. because there is a, there can be a chemical imbalance, you know, mm -hmm. and I'm, of course I'm not a doctor. So again, that's why we had that caveat of, you know, this doesn't need to replace medication mm -hmm. or counseling. This is just a way to equip you like looking to the word of whatever is good, whatever is holy, whatever is pure. Yep. Um, and so, yeah. Do we have anything more on lesson two or you feel like yeah. we're ready to I jump to really, lesson three? I know the, you love day yeah. two. <laughs> day two. Yeah. So yeah. the last paragraph, I just mm -hmm. want to read just a little bit yeah. of it. I just loved it. Um, it's on page 10. Um, it says, most of us aren't people who can simply turn off the bulb of anxiety in mm -hmm. our brains. But that doesn't mean that we are a people without any hope of freedom from anxiety. So where I've had it since my early, like, before teens. Yeah. Um, and even after I've had a relationship with Christ, it's like, I still have hope that there will be one day that I can go without anxiety. Right. right. So that's the difference for me is yeah. just knowing there is hope. Knowing that there is hope. Isn't that such a good thing? And just that um, kind of what I took for somebody who does not I had struggle with anxious thoughts, but not anxiety, um, struggling with anxious thoughts is that bringing that before the Lord, it is a form of surrender. And when, it, when there is a form of surrender, there is that, um, cause we talked about how prayer changes us, not God, God, yep. it changes our hearts, not, not his, he is always solid and good. He and so good. that form of surrender is saying, here it is, is like laying all your cards out on the table 
and saying, this is what's going on, even though he already knows it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now how do I hold this deck of cards? That's really, that's, right. that's yeah. really kind of how it is. Cause it's like, okay, well, you've got them in the wrong order. Or you've got, you know, mm -hmm. how do I, how do I do this? Yeah. Um, how do I deal with what's been dealt, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. So, um, all right, let's turn over to day three, which was, or yeah, day three, which was Emily's favorite. So, um, this one, I feel like we also talked about this one being one of our favorites too, because mm -hmm. um, I love, I think one of the big things that I loved in this one, this is where that trustworthy part came out, was that God hears our prayers. And, but I love how Hannah, and I know when we talked about this, when we talked about, um, I'm drawing a blank on the, the women's study that we just did, the what, whatever the study was, I'm trying to remember the name of it. The, the, the women? Yeah, the, the women one that we just did. From David Lots Christ of good women <laughs> from the Bible that we love to read about. That's the name. Yeah, I'm trying to remember the name of it and I've already, whew, it's gone. But um, I loved when we talked about that. We talked, thank you, Daughters, Daughters of, Grace. of Grace. Thank you, Nora. See, there yep. we go. That's why I need people to jump on here. So um, I loved in that how we talked about the rawness of Hannah. Mm. And there's such a rawness here in that open surrender of, you know, mm -hmm. Again, laying it all before the Lord. And so that God can handle it. He wants us to give it to him and to handle it. Um, and so one of the things that we were going to discuss, and if you don't mind sharing, is like what um, the question three on number 15. And maybe if you guys can jump on in, um, what do you find most difficult in your personal prayer life? Mm -hmm. And so do you want to answer that first or you want yeah. me to? No, no, I can <laughs> So my number one thing that I have a hard time, most difficult, well, I have a lot, but the first is focus Yeah, because I have anxious thoughts mm -hmm. and a mind that just wanders. It's hard for me to fully focus when I'm in, in when I'm praying. So I started um, journaling my prayers mm -hmm. and that has helped. That's um, helped a lot. That's yeah. helped. Another thing is, um, is not feeling like a burden to God. Like here I am again, Lord, yeah. like here, here I am with the same prayer, the same struggles, yeah. the same words over and over. And then, so I know that's Satan using that oh, yeah. technique, but yeah. I feel like I'm a burden to God. Yes. Um, and then another thing is um, not confessing my, what I find my hidden sins, like the sins that you tuck so deep mm -hmm. down in your little secret soul mm -hmm. that you don't have to talk about. Yep. That he already knows. Yes. <laughs> and those can cause anxious thoughts and yeah. anxiety. Because it's like you're worried he's going to discover them. Yes. And guess what? He already knows. It's there. That's right. And so I think that was one of the biggest transforming moments of my life was when there were, there were some particular things in my life that I actually brought forward to God. And it was like mm -hmm. my whole relationship mm -hmm. with the Lord changed. And it was almost to the point where um, it sounds kind of funny, but it was kind of like, God was like, I've been waiting for you to bring right. that up. That's right. Like, let's talk why did about that, it. why'd that take so long? Let's <laughs> talk about it because if it remains hidden, that's what Satan wants. He wants it to remain hidden because when it remains hidden, it remains powerful yeah. in your life because it's, here you can come into all of this, but you can't go into that, yeah. um, you know, and all of those kinds of things. Let's see what some people said. Uh, Catherine said concentration for sure. Yep. Um, so many things to pray for, mm. trying to remember all of it. Shame yeah. on me. And Levy, I'm right there with I you. Sometimes you. I'll be praying for one person and then I'll go another way. Or I will say sometimes I feel selfish yeah. because I'm only praying for things that I need and I forget to pray for others. Yeah. I will say that that's a struggle that I have um, to make intentional time to sit silent before the Lord and praise him. Emily, that is a big one. I was going to say, mm -hmm. Catherine is one of the best at, or at least best at, she's going to start blushing, but at starting her prayers off with praise Kath, mm -hmm. or I mean, Jacqueline's really good with that mm -hmm. too. And I feel guilty sometimes because I don't even do that. I just bypass it in the fast lane. I go straight to God. This is what I need. And there's a time and a place for that, but an intentional time to, prayer I tend to maybe that's why I focused on the Thanksgiving portion is because when you remember to thank the Lord you see what he has done and then yeah. you can pray more open and honestly about the situation that you're in yeah. and Jamie said feeling like I ask for too much that can definitely be a struggle too and um what I would say to that is God can handle it yeah so bring it to him but see what he'll do <laughs> y'all listen to this quote yes from John Piper yes okay you ready prayer causes things to happen that wouldn't happen if you didn't pray. Yeah. 
Yeah. Can I read that one more time? Read it again. Okay. Yeah. Prayer causes things to happen that wouldn't happen if you didn't pray. Yes. That's a Holy Spirit slap, I always say. <laughs> I, like, I just got Holy Spirit slapped. Um, you know, it just kind of like it stops you in your tracks. And that's so good. And it's so true. And not only that, while you're praying, it's not as though it's his spirit working in you. But at the same time, it's changing you as yes. it's changing the situation, which is just which is so, so, so incredible. Um, sometimes I wish that we could see what's happening in the spiritual realm when we pray, because I think that if we did, we wouldn't ever leave. Yeah. Um, the battle of prayer, we would never leave it because we could see the power that comes from it. Um, let's see. Jacqueline said, praising God helps me focus on who God is and changes my perspective. Mm -hmm. That's great. Elizabeth being authentic and repent with a tender heart. See, that is really good. And that is always a difficult thing. Yes. Yeah. Jacqueline, that quote's so good. And this, I feel all the ways, all of the ways described here. <laughs> me too, Sonia. <laughs> I feel that way. Um, yeah. And so what's good to know is that all of these struggles too, you might think that you're kind of the only one. Everyone's listing these and I'm like, yep, that's me. Mm -hmm. That's me. Yep. On all of those. All right. Shall we get to day four? Mm -hmm. All right. Let's get to day four. Um, this one to me, I loved reading Hannah's testimony right before this one because we see Hannah to the point where um, she thought of as drunk because she is praying so deeply and so earnestly and just murmuring to herself, not to herself, to God in prayer. Yeah. And then we get to this one. And this, Amy said, I'm going to ask you to share your um, dandelion oh, metaphor in yeah. a minute. Mm -hmm. But this one, I think is so good because it makes us realize the power of the spirit. And we've been talking about this spiritual um, battlefield that we step into when we pray and that he is with us. But can you share your yeah. dandelion? So she has really good like imagery. She said, trying to explain anxiety to someone who doesn't struggle with it um, to the extent where I feel like almost crippled in a situation. I feel yeah. anxious about stuff, but yeah. not anxiety. Yeah. yeah. So, so I feel like several people, um, if you know me, you know, I'm transparent and vulnerable and I, I'll tell you anything about who I am, what I struggle with. And I, you know, share that I have anxiety and I'm almost all the time anxious. And so um, someone said, it described to me what it's like to have anxiety. And I said, so I'm a dandelion and you take me and you blow so anxiety is like all the seeds that scatter. So that's how my, my mind feels like, like, oh, uh, uh, I'm trying to catch the seeds to put them back together. Place. And my thoughts are just blowing in the wind and I can't bring myself together. You know, I'm emotional. Mm -hmm. I'm high energy. I'm, you know, cry, sad. I'm happy. I mean, right. it's everything just all at all once. Yeah. And, so that's kind of how I describe yeah. anxiety. And it was so great as she was talking about that yesterday, because with that in mind, because, um, you know, we keep talking about, OK, you got to go to prayer. It's got to be your first or, you know, your first step. Like that's what. And yes. But she was saying that when her mind feels like that, she's like, I don't even know how to start. Like, where do I even start? Because all the seeds are scattered. Mm -hmm. Everything's all around. And she's like, I don't even know how to one catch them, <laughs> how to really even grasp a thought. And so how do I even start to pray? And so I'm going to read Romans 8, 26 to 27. And so you can just read along too on page 17. But in the same way, the spirit also helps us in our weakness because we do not know what to pray for as we should. But the spirit himself intercedes for us with unspoken groanings. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the spirit because he intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. And that right there, that unspoken mm -hmm. groaning is so powerful. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like that just, I feel like you can take a breath yeah. when that happens because, um, and I know that in praying for people, sometimes when you're like, I don't even know what to pray for them because there's so much pain or they're in grief or um, I, like, Lord, I don't even know what, where to start because it seems like it's hopeless. And then as you sit with the Lord and begin to just sit with them, it's like things start to come to mind. It's as if the spirit is starting to work and move. It's not as if the spirit is working and moving mm -hmm. um, through all of that. And so um, I was trying to remember which question we were going to, yeah. What comfort 
can this, like this lesson, that scripture, what sort of comfort does that afford you today? And in what ways does this give you some confidence that victory over anxiety is possible? And so some of you want to answer that question. Um, you can. But I loved this quote um, that said, wordlessness in God's presence with reliance on the Holy Spirit to take up our cause, dependence on the sacrifice of Christ to make us whole and yielding ourselves before the Father is purposeful, harmonious prayer to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And um, I just love, there's just one simple sentence. Silent prayer is not purposeless. Yeah. Yeah. It's actually incredibly powerful. And I remember um, some of, you know, like my story of singleness um, and all of that be still and know exactly Catherine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but in that, that there were times when things would happen, maybe when rejection on a different level would happen or, just even just the waiting, you know, waiting and waiting and waiting and continuing to have to wait. And there's rejection. OK, you got to start all over again. Literally just like the most heartfelt prayers would be something as simple, like as simple as this hurts. Mm -hmm. And that's it. That's all I could say it was just this hurts or even I'm scared. And then there's like other times that I've prayed like uh, just one word entry uh, just help me Yeah, or just help. Like, I just, I just need help. Like, I don't even know what to say. And yet those were the most comforting times. And it's easy to say them now, you know, with a little more confidence, but those are scary moments. And yet God's confidence, you know, his, his presence comes in. Yeah. Um, Nora says that the spirit knows us. The spirit knows our weakness and knows what we need and he can help us. Exactly. Um, and then Emily says, even when I don't know what, what words to say, the Holy spirit knows. Yep. So that I just I think that day four now that we're talking about, I think day four was probably my favorite. Mm -hmm. um, and so. All right. Well, let's turn to day five. And um, one of the questions I kind of had with day five, um, I'll read this scripture and then we will go over some of the questions. But something that I want you guys to kind of answer um, is about refuge. And so Matthew eleven twenty eight. Um, 28 through 30 says, come to me, all of you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take up my yoke and learn from me because I am lowly and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Mm -hmm. And so I guess my question is, where are you seeking refuge? Mm -hmm. Is it in his presence or can we be real honest? And I was telling Amy this before I have a tendency to, um, I'll go to my friends, I'll go to my phone <laughs> to distract myself from situations. Mm -hmm. I'll talk with my sisters. I'll talk with my mom. I'll talk with Jacqueline. I'll talk with Amy, you know, and all of those, they can be good things probably except the phone, but you know, um, you know, they can all be just distractions. Why do I not turn to God first? Yeah. Because only by talking to him is his peace. Yeah. And so, um, Nora, thank you. Mm -hmm. You understand me on a whole, whole level. <laughs> Jumping in on that. And so, yeah. So where where is it? Where is your first turn to? You know, where are you seeking refuge? Is it come to me? Is it coming, you know, to Jesus? Or what's your first reaction? And it was kind of surprising to me when I started to think about mm -hmm. um, where I turned first you know, with who I went to. Um, and again, all people that will great and give me godly wisdom. So it's not necessarily bad, but there are times that I will turn to just, just plain distractions because I don't want to really think about it and I don't really want to talk. So again, I take that and I tuck it in that secret little place and then it's just festers. <laughs> what about, uh, so, what about Oreos? Oreos. Do you turn to Oreos? I can turn to food. I yeah. can. I've been known to do that too. Yeah. Anyone yeah. else? Oh, there goes Jamie. Food. Ah! <laughs> uh, food. I put a sign on my fridge that says God's not here. <laughs> I Jamie, that. I love that. That is so good. We need Man, signs. Thank you for being so honest. I love it. Um, I love, love that. And so I'm getting better at choosing God. I'm a work in progress. Thanks, Catherine. Yes, we all are a work in progress with that. Yeah. And so what I loved, though, is I was, as we were reading this, I was thinking about or as I was doing this study, I did think about Isaiah 26 verses three through four. And so this is where my my theme of trustworthy came in and it's same as ever present. 
um, because God is with us and he's ever present. And it says, you will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are stayed or are steadfast because they trust in you or keep in perfect peace his whose mind is stayed on you. And this is my NIV version. Um, trust in the Lord forever for the Lord. The Lord himself is the rock eternal. Mm-hmm. And I love that mm-hmm. that rock. So that goes back to, you know, casting yes. up the, the wheat, you know, and the rock, it's solid. It's sure. It's a sure foundation. Um, so I just I just love that. And um, was there one of the questions on date on lesson five that we really wanted to talk about? I was trying to remember. Oh, what are some practical ways to take on the yoke of Christ and exchange your own burdens for his? And so I would like to know kind of what I know we've talked about the one that I do, which is (laughs) gluten free -free Oreos. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> nice levy gluten-free Oreos are the bomb. Yes. <laughs> um, I think that Jacqueline talked about one of those last week about the breathing in Jesus mm-hmm. and breathing out those things. I feel like that was a really good practical way. You've talked about yours, mm-hmm. you know, doing yeah. um, whatever is good, whatever is lovely. Do you, do you not just love that? I think mm-hmm. that that is so, so good. Yeah. Um, I even sometimes will go and think about the armor of God, Mm -hmm. because I love at the end of that passage in Ephesians 6, 10 through 20, that it says, and after you've done all of this to stand Mm -hmm. and that you are therefore able to stand once you have put on all. And plus it takes your mind off of things whenever you can do that. And that's one of those that I wish I did more. I Um, love what she, they say mm -hmm. uh, about how to uh, imitating Christ will help us flee from anxiety. Mm -hmm. So that, that um, paragraph about being um, strengthened and equipped to flee from anxious, Mm -hmm. depressive, fearful, doubtful, difficult things and emotions and instead we seek refuge in him yeah so i yeah. just love that because there's that open invitation of come to me mm-hmm. you know come to me mm-hmm. um nora by giving god our worries and fears and allowing him to transform us yes i love that mm-hmm. and so one of the ones I, I mentioned as well is just writing in a journal for me it helps to get those things out and just being still and knowing that he is god um and so Again, the the title of this study, which is so good, um, is Walking Away from Anxiety and Into God's Word. And so I actually landed on it just him being ever present, as we said, was Matthew 4, 4, and that we do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. And I just love love that, that that we can, that physically we may have need, but by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord, that can be our sure foundation Mm -hmm. um, to help us, especially when we are anxious. And so, um, so yeah, that's kind of where we landed that he's in the battle with us. He'll never leave us nor forsake us. And what's awesome about having Amy here, um, you can give her a thumbs up or a little clap or something for having, having that there. She's going to share a few resources um, that she brought with her and we can put links to these resources. I'll send an email here in just a moment um, with all of those, but just some other things that have helped her in the battle of anxiety. Mm-hmm. Um, and these are all Christian resources and just really, really great. So. Yeah. Apart from, um, I mean, the Lord and his word is ultimately the best resource, but I have found just a few things that I go back to often, um, that help me, um, with my anxiety. And I'm just going to share them with you. And, um, the first one is, um, it's actually from the daily grace company and it is scripture for anxiety, scripture for anxiety. So it's 40 days of um it's like a journal and it always has um, a scripture for each day and then it helps you walk through your day it has reflection and then action and then guided prayer and is the action kind of like an action plan yeah it's like okay okay. uh, yeah so it this one this particular day is how does how does knowing that god's power is perfected in your weakness change your perspective on anxiety so it just helps kind of put your thoughts all in one place so i love it yeah she was um, bragging about this before we even started the study she was like yeah. i want to tell these people about yeah. this so and so that's actually, a really great one i don't get paid for this but daily grace right now has half off everything yeah so, so that's a great way to go and i'll yeah. send you guys a link to all of these yeah. such resources in just a moment um, The other one is this book. It's um, Suffering is Never for Nothing by Elizabeth Elliot. It's a great book. Mm -hmm. Great book. Yes. And then finally, um, I mean, you can see how like worn and torn I've got notes, but it's (laughs) Jenny Allen's Get Out of Your Head. A great book. I look at it probably twice a week and it talks about stop the spiral of toxic thoughts. Most of our anxiety, um, 
my anxiety all starts in just my crazy head. And then from there, it spirals down. So it's really, these are so just kind of stopping it in its yep, tracks and helping you to understand yep. where it is. Yeah. And then there was another resource from um, Jenny Allen as well that she, was that the, mm -hmm. it's, it's the, part of this book. It's part of the book, it's a but podcast. it's a little podcast. So, um, and so we'll do all of that, but yeah, but we just hit the 40 minute mark. I told you it was going to take longer than you thought. <laughs> she didn't think it'd be that long. So <laughs> anyways, but um, thank you so much for joining us. And before we sign off real quick, because um, one of us will pray, but um, if you can maybe share with us, like what's, what is one of the things going forward or something that you took from this week that you would like to implement um, in the weeks ahead to kind of become a normal practice? I think for me, it's going to God in prayer first. Or, I mean, I carry my, pretty much carry my Bible and my journal with me everywhere mm -hmm. going to that first. Cause mm -hmm. I, once I get it out of my head, it's a little bit easier. Um, <laughs> Catherine said, I heard the other day, don't think less of yourself, think of yourself less. I like ah. that. That's a great little slogan. Um, Nora said that God doesn't give us a spirit of fear, but a power, love and a sound mind. So she's clinging to that scripture. Mm -hmm. I love that. Jamie said, thanks for letting me jump in today. Okay, great. Th Jamie, I'm so glad that you um, got to join in. So um, I will be sending out those resources and Emily said, be more intentional in prayer. I believe all of us can take that one on. Um, so thank you so much for you guys being active in the comments and um, big thank and you. Thanks to for Amy. having me. Yeah, big thank, thank you, you to Amy joining on, um, jumping in and joining on. So it's a big help. Um, and sharing and being vulnerable. So yeah. I so appreciate you doing that. So we'll just pray here in just a moment and I'll send you all those links and then we'll see you next week. And Jacqueline will be back probably all tan from Jamaica. So I'm a little jealous, but it's okay. All right. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, I just, I thank you for your word. I thank you for um, each of these ladies who have joined us today. I thank you that you, there are resources and there are those that we, we have to remember that we're not alone in this battle of anxious thoughts and anxiety, Lord. Um, for some of us, it's just thoughts that are anxious. And for others, it's a true, Lord, struggle, crippling anxiety. And so, God, I pray that you, um, I know that you are a God that meets us where we need. And so I just ask for each of these ladies and even those who will join on later, Lord, that you would be with them and um, in their struggles. And God, I also pray for our own hearts, that we would be vulnerable before you, that we would lay out the very things that are worrying us the most. And if we can't even come to a place where we even know what's worrying us, Lord, that we would know that your spirit speaks on our behalf and helps to calm our worried thoughts, to calm the anxiety, mm -hmm. God, and that you give us a spirit of power and of love and of sound mind. Yes. And so God, we just thank you for that. It's in your heavenly, holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, ladies, thank you so much. And um, I will see you same time, same place next week. Bye.